What's up guys, AC Card Shark back again, back with my 2016 wrap-up video. Uh, today we are going to be hitting up the top 11 games of 2016. Yes, I give you 11. Most channels give you 10 or 5, I give you 11. Uh, I'll explain that in a second. I'm going to do my um, top like on the radar games, games I never had a chance to really get into, but I feel would have probably cracked my top 10 had I had more time with them. Um, and stuff like that and then and then my biggest like disappointments or like the biggest games that dropped the ball in 2016 so we're gonna get right into it uh, mainly because there's a lot to get to um the number 11 didn't quite make the top 10 and there's a reason for it um it released on ps4 like december 5th of 15 and then on xbox one in like february of 16 so it was kind of like on the cusp of 2016 um so i can't really officially enter it into my top 10 although i believe it deserves a spot because it's it's intriguing and just so different and and interesting uh that game is among the sleep on the uh, i have it on ps4 but it's on both xbox one and ps4 among the sleep um i did stream a couple of episodes for you guys you can go back on my channel to see those um just absolutely cool, like psychological horror game uh, from the perspective of a toddler and just like the, the scary things in the world from a toddler's perspective, like the dark or like when your mom leaves you in a room by yourself and you have no one there with you and stuff that, you know, as adults, we don't care about. But as a toddler, it's like the scariest thing alive. So, I mean, it's just really such a great point of view. And such a such a great uh, off center different game. Uh, like I said, it was on the cusp between 2015 and 2016, depending on what system you bought it for. Uh, this one came out in 15, so I put it on the outside looking in, so to speak, in 2000. Uh, I'm sorry for number 11 because it came out in 2015. Technically, the first game hit in that year. So uh, number 11 on my list among the sleep. Uh, number 10, I have um, Tom Clancy's The Division. Um, I have this as low as I do because of the fact that I enjoyed the hell out of playing multiplayer with Pixel Sandwich. Um, I, I really just didn't like playing by myself. Um, the game is absolutely amazing. Don't get me wrong. That's why it's on my list. But uh, I mean, the, the fact, <clears throat> excuse me, the fact that it's set in New York City, Black Friday, all that kind of stuff. Like the setting is absolutely amazing. I'm not really a huge Tom Clancy fan. Um, I did play Rainbow Six, I want to say back in the day, but this is like the first one I picked up since. Uh, and it's mainly because it had multiplayer. Um, if you have somebody specific that you can jump on and play with, um, it's absolutely worth your time, worth your money. I mean, just an absolutely fantastic game. And um, I just I just didn't enjoy playing by myself or with strangers. And it just that's just kind of how I am though. So number 10, uh, was Tom Clancy's The Division. Number nine, I don't have anything to hold up. So um, it was a downloadable game. Um, they do have a physical copy out there. I do have to try to track one down through limited run games. But it was a downloadable title. Um, number nine on my list for 2016 is Firewatch. Now, Firewatch, I felt, was, was absolutely cool just because of the fact of how different, again, it was. Now, that, that's a common theme with me is different. Um, I like off-center. I like the stuff that kind of goes into left field where other games don't really dare to go, uh, among the sleep being one of them. Um, Firewatch is this peaceful, uh, you're out in the wilderness, you just explore. You don't have to go task to task. You can actually just explore. Um, I'm actually missing some trophies in that game because I didn't explore. I just went task to task. But, I mean, it's just... It's so cool. I mean, it's, it's you know, you spend, I mean, this is going to be a spoiler for those who haven't played it yet. So um, if those of you who are still looking to play this game, kind of fast forward a little bit. Um, you know, you're talking to this girl the whole time through your walkie talkie, um, another another person on staff, like a fire, another fire watch. And you develop this relationship with her without ever seeing her. And you really get to know her and love her and and just really appreciate her, and you've never met face to face, and it's just so cool to see that relationship build between the two characters over time, um, as well as, like I said, just the beauty of, of of exploring, and it's just a really fun game, and it was really a surprise for me, and um, you know, if it wasn't for having such other blockbuster games, it would have been higher on my list. So, Firewatch was number nine, uh, number eight, and for the pure reason that I haven't had enough time to really sink into this game, and you'll hear that a lot actually, um, Dragon Quest Builders. Dragon Quest Builders, um, basically picture Minecraft with a point, basically. Um, it's basically you are rebuilding uh, different cities, towns, areas in the world on, on the map um, that have been destroyed, and they give you tasks to then go find resources um, and rebuild the, the, the section, so to speak, or the section of the, of the map. Um, 
so basically it's Minecraft. We have to go out, find the materials and everything else, but it's also, it has its own storyline. It has its own point to it. So, I mean, an absolutely awesome game that you can just put lots of hours into, which is why I haven't yet because I've, I've been playing games to try to complete games. And this game just seems like it's going to be longer. So I haven't really sunk my teeth into it yet. Um, but the, the idea and, and the, the feeling of this game, I mean, as you can see back here, my poster, I'm a, I'm a huge Minecraft fan. I love the builders. I love the creativity. Um, and that takes this and then puts a story and a spin on it, <clears throat> excuse me, to um, actually have a point and a storyline. So uh, that was, uh, I don't even know what number I'm on. That was number what, eight? Yeah, I think that was number eight. <laughs> I'm not even keeping track. What do I have left? Three, six. Yeah, that was number eight. Uh, number seven. And literally because I only sunk my teeth into this yesterday, I have a feeling, again, if I had more time with this, it would shoot up higher on my list. But as of this moment in time, um, number seven for me is The Last Guardian. I love this game. Don't get me wrong. And again, it's because there's other games ahead of it right now uh, that are, are better in my mind or just series that I love more or whatever. Last Guardian has has blown me away so far. I've only put two hours in. I've got probably another 10 to 12 to go. Uh, I'm actually leaving after I've recorded this to go back upstairs and plop it in again and put another hour or two into it. Um, I, I do like this game a lot. And I'm speaking from the point of view of, from what Pixel Sandwich said, if you caught my streams, uh, there's a lot of patience needed in the beginning part of the game. Once you get into the meat and potatoes part of the game and it really starts going, it becomes a whole nother beast is what he's telling me. Um, Unfortunately, I need to record this video before it gets too late into 2017. So as of right now, Last Guardian, I had so many different feelings in that game already in the first two hours. Like when he finally trusted me, uh, uh, speaking of uh, Trico, and um, you know he finally started trusting me. When he jumped in the water for the first time and you coaxed him down saying, it's okay, come on, and he trusted you and did it. Um, when he jumps and leaps over you, how large he is when you look up and you see this large just dude just flying over you. I mean, the feelings are great. The gameplay has left me with a little bit to be desired as of now. They don't tell you much. And that's part of the charm of the game, too, is to find out what you were doing the whole time. And I, I get that. But right now, I'm just not feeling it because there's no story really driving me right now. So again, I'm going to put the time in. I'm going to get through it because everyone has told me the ending is worth it. But for right now, number seven, The Last Guardian. I know that's a disappointment for some of you. Probably Pixel Sandwich is probably sitting there throwing his phone across the room right now. But it is what it is. Um, number six, um, it's a rehash. I mean, they've been doing this a lot lately with a lot of games. But the collection, you cannot beat the amount of content that came with it. Um, and it would have been higher on my list had they had not had they not blocked the ability to stream this, and it really disappointed me. Uh, that is Bioshock the Collection, uh, released this year, September of, of 2016. Um, it, it does include, as you can see, it does include all three Bioshocks, one, two, and Infinite, all on one disc. Uh, it is remastered onto the PS4, so it looks that much nicer, and it has all the DLC. So I mean, you literally get every piece of Bioshock World in this collection and it's been on sale lately i bought it day one because i couldn't wait to have it uh, i love the slip cover and, and you know there's the case right there but i love that slip cover where the ocean is shining and then you got columbia up above you have rapture down below uh that's kind of why you can't really see it but i have my rapture shirt on uh, i thought i'd be more in frame um but that's why i wore my rapture shirt because i knew this would be on my list um bioshock the collection guys i mean i actually know some people who have never played a bioshock game you know who you are out there and i know you're watching so uh, this game, you need to get it. And especially now that it's it's remastered, it has all of the DLC involved. I mean, you're literally getting every piece of everything in the Bioshock world. I can't say enough good things about it, guys. Uh, the only thing is 2K, 2K games really piss me off. Uh, I tried to stream this for you guys to, to show those of you who haven't played it yet what you're missing. And they blocked it completely. So, like, it's literally they just blew the screen out, like like the color blue, not blew it out. But uh, anyway, so number number six for me this year in 2016, Bioshock, the collection. Number five probably would have been higher, again, had I had time to, to, to plop into this. Uh, unfortunately, I got it for Christmas. I played it a little bit on a rental, knew I wanted it, and then I got it for Christmas. Obviously, it's only about a week and a half ago, uh, so I haven't had time to really put into it. And that game is Doom. <clears throat> so number five on my list is Doom. Um, feel, it just felt, it's one of the top shooters of the year. Um, there's basically in my mind, there's, there was three shooters that were regarded as top shooters. Um, 
I only have two of them on my list. Uh, the other one being Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. I'm not a fan of Call of Duty, as you guys know. I'll play it eventually. Um, I don't see it cracking any of these games off my list, though. Uh, so anyway, Doom. Definitely one of the top shooters of the year. I would say the second best shooter of the year, obviously, based on my list. Um, it just felt... I've always used this, and I, I hopefully you understand what I mean. It felt like smooth like butter. Like when you're when you move those sticks, you're just moving like you're truly there and you're truly moving. The gun felt good that you could feather the bullets like real lightly, or you could just hold it down and just crank them full of, of bullets. Um, it just felt felt really good. And and you know, Pixel said something on his top video, which this was on as well, and he said something like, you know, they they announced Doom, you know, Bethesda announced Doom. And we were just like, eh, who cares? Because that was the year they were announcing Fallout, uh, Fallout 4 at E3. And we just kind of like shrugged this one off. And it came out, and I didn't really care. And I, I wasn't one of those, I was like, oh, pre-order or day one. I was just like, eh, it's Doom. You know, like, I've seen Doom since I was 12. You know, like, I was playing Doom on the PC at 12 years old. What do I care about this game? And then I was like, you know what? I have a free rental spot from Gamefly. Let me try it out. And I was like, just blown away. Absolutely blown away. So if you guys have a chance, please uh, pick up Doom. Uh, Gamefly has it on sale for like 14 bucks now if you want a hard copy um, just it's it's getting cheap and it's definitely by far uh, it cracked my top five so uh, the next game up is the rare appearance of a 3ds game believe it or not 3ds um, this game was so long awaited and so hard to find it came out to no press it has yet to get any kind of press, even after coming out. People really aren't even talking about it. And it's a true shame because it's a great game. Very, very short game. But I don't really mind that so much on my 3DS. Like, I'm good with a short game. I'm actually good with short games in general now because I have just no time to play. But uh, this game, absolutely awesome. Number four on my list for the year, and that is River City Tokyo Rumble. Um, as you guys know, River City Ransom back on the NES was an absolutely amazing beat em up, way far ahead of its time. Um, this, to me, I. I can't think off the top of my head. I may be missing something, but off the top of my head, I can't think of another game that really felt like a sequel to River City Ransom. This does. This is an absolutely amazing 8-bit beat-em-up on the 3DS, so it has the 3D features in it. Uh, it's very similar to River City Ransom. You go in the stores, you learn new techniques, you fight bosses, you have weapons. I mean, if you know that, you know what this game is. And if you love River City Ransom... I don't know why you don't have this if you don't. So uh, this is my sealed copy. I have two copies, actually. Um, I did pick up a sealed copy from Amazon, which has the keychain inside, because it's so hard to find, and I just love that series so much. I want a sealed copy, and then I have the copy I used to actually play um, from Gamefly. Uh, I rented it and then just kept it. But River City Ransom, uh, the, you have dodgeball mode. You have, I mean, I can't even think about, I mean, what other, I just dropped it and probably unsealed it, whatever. Um, there's just all these characters and stages. I mean, it's the 30th anniversary, as you can see right there. The 30th anniversary right there of, of the series. Um, and, I mean, there's there's extra modes. You don't have to just go with story mode. You can actually go with, like, dodgeball mode and everything else. Um, but River City Tokyo Rumble, an absolutely uh, amazing gem on the on the 3DS. Um, number three on my list this year, uh, Batman the Telltale series. Absolutely had a blast playing this game. To the point where I, I played through all the episodes, streamed them all. So they're on my channel. If you want to check them out, please just go back, like, a month or two. Um, and I actually was counting down the days until episode four and episode five were releasing on the PSN to download. This is, as you can see, the season pass disc. So it came with, uh, episode one on the disc, two, three, four, and five. You had to download when they became available on PSN, but it gave you the, uh, the, the rights to do so through this disc. It was like 30 bucks at, at release. I bought it within the first two weeks. I want to say, uh, when it came out, I didn't even know what was coming out. And then it came out, I saw it on the shelf at GameStop and I was just like, Telltale put a new Batman game out. That's awesome. And I love Telltale. That's one of my favorite series and developers of games just because I love the the, the series, not the series, but the uh, the style that they put out. Um, and, and to be in the Batman world with, with Joker and Two-Face and Catwoman and just all those awesome characters, um, as you can see, the art style is very like comic booky, very Wolf Among Us. Um, and uh, just really, really awesome. And it just had a great storyline. And it definitely, uh, spoiler if you haven't played it, they're definitely setting up for a season two on Batman, the way it ended off and everything. So uh, Batman the Telltale series, well worth the money. I mean, it, it, you won't find it for anything more than 30 bucks for the entire season. Uh, you definitely can't go wrong with Batman there. Number three. Uh, number two has a two in the title. Uh, the best shooter of the year, in my opinion. Uh, that game is Titanfall 2. I absolutely adored this game. I, I thought it was absolutely amazing. Um, 
So basically, you know, Titanfall 1, I was a uh, quick backstory. I was a beta tester for Titanfall 1 on the Xbox One before that came out. I started playing that game and that was the first experience I remember having where I felt that smooth as butter shooter feel. Um, I was playing it. I was loving it. Absolutely. Just, you know, jumping in the Titan. I was just, oh my God, this is amazing. And then I do some research into it. I'm like, okay, when's this coming out? I want this game. Oh wait, it's multiplayer only. I don't play multiplayer for the most part. I just, I don't jump into those types of games. So I passed on Titanfall 1. I never bought it, never played it. I was like, it's not for me. They didn't make this for me. They made it for the multiplayer fan. I'm not one of those. So then when I heard Titanfall 2 was coming out and it had a campaign, I was like, holy shit, like this is this is exactly what I've been waiting for. I wanted Titanfall to be that game. Now it is. So uh, I didn't get it on release. I waited until they had a deal. I got a buy two, get one free at Best Buy, talked into by Pixel Sandwich. Uh, he always talks me into spending my money. Oh, well, not always, but... But, you know, usually it's good games, minus one time. Um, so I got Last Guardian, I got Titanfall 2, and I got uh, the, what do you call it, Rise of the Tomb Raider Special Edition, whatever, for free. So uh, I did pay, like, full price for this. Um, worth every penny. Pay 60 bucks for it, I don't care. It's worth every penny. Uh, absolutely amazing. It took me about, I think I added it up to be a seven or seven and a half hours to go through the campaign on this. Um, I'm also not the greatest player <coughs> in the world, so... Basically, um, I had to retry a lot of parts. Like the, the last session, I had to redo one of the, bat the boss battles like 10 times. I mean, so it takes me a little longer to get through. So you may be able to get through it in like six hours or so if you're better at shooters, um, which I'm not. But there's nothing like the feeling of some of those loadouts on the Titan and, and the guns and the the tracking missiles. And I mean, just the, the wall runs alone. I felt they overdid the wall runs, but not to a fault. Uh, I'm not going to fault them for it. It's a cool technology. It's a cool thing that they did where you went wall run to wall run. Um, the For those of you who haven't played it, you know, Earmuffs Kids, uh, the time travel section of this game blew me away. And that's the point I'm going to remember most about that game, I believe, is the time travel section. Um, using time travel to alter terrain to get through an area was just absolutely mind-blowing to me. I mean, it was such a well-done piece of of gaming level so to speak i guess i came out right um it just it, it blew me away titanfall 2 the entire time you play it there's not a section of fluff there's no filler there's no there's no padding there's nothing to make it longer just to make a longer game to, for the quality or the whatever the, the quantity i should say this game is quality from the time you hit start or options or whatever the crap the button is on the controller uh until you see the end credits it is action-packed beginning to end and it's awesome from beginning to end so guys i can't recommend titanfall 2 enough um it was really tough between it was between that game and this game for game of the year uh for 2016 and seeing the time that i'm seeing right now on top of my my recording here um, i'm going to end it here and just do the top games um, i will make a separate video for honorable mention slash on the radar games and disappointments there'll be a separate video coming for that um, i just don't want to keep you too long on one video anyway game of the year um i don't even have a standard copy of this this is a special edition it came with the libertalia edition um to give you a hint uh that game is uncharted 4 guys i i had a tough really really tough time between this game and titanfall 2 um titanfall 2 was innovative yes um, i'm just a huge fan of uncharted i can't i can't get away from it and this game kept me coming back for more to the point where I would go to work at night and think about, okay, where did I leave off in Uncharted? What am I going to do tomorrow? What do I think's coming up the next day? Um, I did stream a lot of this game on my channel as well, if you want to check it out. Um, th this is the Steelbook edition of Uncharted 4. I don't have a standard copy. I may want to get one because I put, I put this back into the big box Libertalia with the statue. Um, but I I've never seen such a gorgeous looking game the 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 water the 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 cutscenes the, the the people it looks so real and so realistic and the fact that you're hunting the pirate treasure down I'm a huge like I've, I'm a sucker for pirate storylines um, except for Black Flag I hated that game um, I I just I couldn't get this one away from from the number one spot I just couldn't do it, it it's it's the staple of the PlayStation as far as I'm concerned this series um, it's the reason I bought a PS4 was because of Uncharted 4 coming out. I got the Uncharted 4 special edition console, the controllers, the headset. I mean, everything. The, the, the charging station for my controllers for PS4 is Uncharted 4. 
I can't get away from from the series. I have an Uncharted Four, you know, Nathan Drake's uh, action figure put up by NECA. I mean, literally, I I cannot get away from Uncharted Four. I absolutely love the series. I love Nathan Drake as a character. I loved every character, Sully, everybody in it. Uh, I'm looking forward to the new one. You know, spoiler for the for the looking forward to 2017 video. I'm looking forward to the new Uncharted. It's supposed to come out in 2017. We'll see if it does, but. Um, I just can't say enough good things. You guys know what Uncharted's all about. And uh, it just absolutely blows me away. Absolute game of the year for 2016, guys. And that's going to wrap up my top 10 slash 11. Remember, I'm the only one who gives you 11. Uh, top 11 games of 2016, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned. I will have one video for the disappointments as well as the On the Radar honorable mention games. Um, I will also have a video coming in the next couple of weeks probably of games I'm looking forward to in 2017. Um, and that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed till next time. AC card shark. Take care.